Hello there, fellow showmans, and today I want to talk about the new Object 752, because unfortunately it is in crates, obviously, which immediately means this tank is not worth buying whatsoever, because you're going to overpay no matter what if you just want the tank. Remember, if you buy something in this game, you have to personally profit from it, you have to enjoy it, because otherwise you can't sell it again, so you've just thrown away your money for nothing. If you want to throw away your money for nothing, then become a member of the channel. That would be certainly more useful, I think, than buying crates like this, if you want to. If you want to buy crates, then I can't help you. Now, overall, what we have on this vehicle is we have very strong armor, especially in a turret with this sort of double cast or whatever you call that. Um, so that is going to be very strong. You also have 8 degrees of gun depression, which is very unusual for a Russian tank. Um, but you do have the cupolas on top. As you can see in the armor profile, it's very strong. But now let's look at it a bit more in detail and not in the game. First of all, we're going to go to tank compare in Blitz Stars because obviously that is a very nice thing to do here. Now, 245 penetration is the worst, and 2529 DPM is also almost the worst in this comparison. Worse than something like a K81 by quite a margin. Now, you do have 340 millimeters of heat penetration, but mind you, the IS 8 does have that as well. Now, you have this two shell autoloader with four seconds into clip reload. The K81 has three shots with 3.53 seconds. So basically, you do unload faster, you also have higher alpha damage, but in the end, the clip comes out at around the same, while the Kennedy one has uh, the better DPM, it also has the better aim time and accuracy, uh, at least raw dispersion is relatively not great on the Kennedy one, so that is where this tank does shine, the dispersion while moving is excellent, which is good for an autoloader because obviously... Uh, your second shot is going to be then aimed quite a bit better. Then you have 8 degrees of gun depression, which is relatively unusual for a tank like this, obviously. Um, one more than the K81, uh, but uh, on par with something like a M103 and a 50TP prototype. And then the mobility is not great. The effective power to weight ratio is uh, better than the K81s, but it is lower than some of the others, especially on the hard terrain here. So... Overall, what we have, what is the strongest point of this, ignore this down here, this is just, this is try-hard testers playing the tank, this has no value whatsoever. Um, 302mm on the turret, says here, and 198 on the hull, which is very strong, so now let's check out the armor. Now we've already seen that it is somewhat competitive, even though not amazing, in all the other stats, and there's nothing outstanding there, but this is where it does become interesting, because here, obviously, with this sort of double armor plate here, you have 195 at the back, so at the front you end up with a lot of armor on the turret, which is very, very strong. However, the top of the turret is relatively weak. Even tier 8s are going to be able to penetrate that uh, most of the time if they do hit it in the middle, so that is a weak spot. And also, it's a sort of oscillating turret, as you can see here. That's why it comes out, um, which means that even if you use the gun depression, your cupolas are still going to be uh, exposed, obviously, because the cupolas do go up when your gun goes down, which is a very significant weak spot, um, and if you use the gun depression, you definitely have to keep that in mind, that your cupolas can be hit at any moment. The sides of the turret are relatively strong, actually, with this uh, shape, does retain a, its strength for a lot of the angle, so the turret is uh, very, very strong, and that's nothing new for Russian tanks there. What is new is that it actually has 8 degrees of gun depression. Now, the upper plate is not the most amazing because of its shape. Now, it goes out at the sides where it, it's a lot stronger, but in the middle, it's relatively flat, so you have 260 millimeters here in the middle, um, which means that you can be penned with most premium rounds here, which, you know, it's good armor, but it is not outstanding. So, for a heavy tank like this, that claims to have insane armor, but you can penetrate with premium rounds where, without any trouble, and the lower plate is also relatively weak, and these plates here should not be a problem as well. You might get some bounces here because of the angles on these, but the lower plate is going to be penetrable at all times, pretty much. Also, if you go hold down, obviously it gets weaker. If you get on top of the tank, it's still relatively weak because you have this uh, section here that is flat. Now, the sides, it's, well, boat shape, like the IS-7, which makes the side armor on this vehicle very, very strong. So... You have 70 millimeters, but obviously it's caved inwards like that, which is going to increase the, the armor angle. And you also have this uh, 20 millimeter plate of uh, spaced armor up here, which is going to make this tank also relatively good at side scraping. Now, is this going to be a good tank? Yes. Is it worth buying? Absolutely not. So as you can see again here, uh, you have the uh, gold, you have the premium days, and you have the tank. So... You get three rewards, certificates, boosters, and days of premium, so the gold is not guaranteed. So, 
you know, you're, I just paid 4,000 gold for this. Let's see what we're going to get out of this. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this at all, because is this worth uh, that? You know, three regular and seven days of premium, which is somewhat decent. That's probably a, one of the higher end rewards here um, that you're going to get most of the time. So, yeah, one day, 750 gold. There we go. I paid 4,000. We're around at a value of, I think... Let's, assume, let's let's be generous and assume the value here is around 2,200. Um, and then we're going to go up. And we're going to get the third one, which we're going to end up with two days of premium crown. And boom, we ended up with a value of... A, let's, let's be very generous here. And let's say we ended up with a value of around 3,000 gold. For 4,000 gold. So, I just... Yeah. Not, not good, right? So now, instead of talking about a overpriced tank, let's instead talk about the K81, because that thing was available for regular value before. Well, depends um, what is valuable to you, because for me, T9 uh, premium tanks aren't valuable, because what do they do? Unless you specifically want the tank, they're not worth it. A tier 8 gives you more credits, a tier 10 gives you more damage, so there is not really any point to, to go for this, and uh, yeah, there is no trade-off either between those two. It's not the best of both worlds kind of situation. It's just bad at both. Um, pretty much. So, that's not great. Ideally, you want to have a tier 8 or tier 8 to make crits and then maybe if you feel generous to Wargaming uh, to donate to their operation at tier 10, but I would never recommend a tier 9 premium for anyone unless either you're collecting tanks or you specifically want that tank. And you, trust me, you don't want the the object uh, 752. You don't want it. It might look it. It might look good on paper, and it is going to be a good tank. No doubt about that. But whether it's a good value or not, that is very rare. To have a good tank for a good value is very, very rare in Blitz, and that's why I rarely recommend bundles because obviously most of you are going to buy like are going to buy like three or four bundles maybe. So if I recommend everything, that's bad. And obviously, I can never recommend crates because crates are always designed to make you lose more than you gain. That's simply how gambling works. Otherwise, it wouldn't be used um, if it wouldn't have a positive effect. Otherwise, they would just sell it on it on their own, which they don't. So it works, and it works because you end up with so many things that you don't want, and not with what you do want. So basically, you're just throwing out money for boosters that you're not looking for, unless you want boosters then. Congratulations on receiving absolutely miserable value. Now, the Canadian one it has three shots, so but you do end up with a somewhat similar clip overall damage. You do take longer to unload, though. The armor on this thing is also relatively strong on the turret. Um, you do have these cupolas sticking out as well. Now, the hull is relatively weak, though, uh, in line somewhat with the uh, 752. So, overall, I do think that the 752 is a better vehicle than this one um, because it's just a bit more... A bit more well armored and a bit faster on the uh, reload, but it is also slightly slower. So, in the end, you do end up at somewhat of a tie, and I do end up in a very bad situation because I don't have a team anymore. Uh, which, to be fair, these days in Blitz is not all that uh, uncommon. So, what I'm going to do here, obviously, what you want to do in an auto loader is get distance. That's what you want to do in every tank, is you want to get distance between you and all the enemies because if they can't push you at once you can fight them 1v1s and then when you win multiple 1v1s and um, you have a lot bigger chance of actually winning the game because obviously if three people are shooting at you at the same time then you don't really have a chance whereas if you're fighting someone 1v1 and you're able to focus on them uh, 1v1 then you do have a significantly higher chance now obviously in a situation like this where the team didn't really contribute too much it is relatively impossible to actually pull it off because the clip damage simply isn't enough to actually make it work and I'm probably going to get killed by the batshit here. So this is also a good tank and if it does come back in the shop, if you do really want a tier 9, this can be an option but as always, I don't recommend tier 9s. Uh, get a tier 8, get something on like tier 42, get an AMX M449 those are better value for their money and uh, you just ignore the crates, they're just a, a gigantic waste of money.